The federal paperwork burden continues to grow for small firms as agencies churn out regulations and notices at a rate ne of nearly 1,500 pages per week. It seems that every day brings some new paperwork on small businesses. In their most recent annual report, OMB found that the overall burden increased nearly 700 million hours for, for, from FY 2005 to FY 2006. Paperwork is costly for small firms. According to an FIB study, paperwork and record keeping costs small businesses nearly $50, million, $50 per hour. Not surprisingly, small businesses cited the volume as being the one of the most difficult problems. The Paperwork Reduction Act or PRA was created in 1980 with the intent of curtailing the growth of paperwork, but unfortunately, it hasn't done so. One question the committee seeks to address today is whether current law provides OMB with the right tools to limit their growth or if changes must be made to the PRA to improve its effectiveness. At today's hearing, we have pres present the administrator of the office that was created as part of the Paperwork Reduction Act, the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs. As administrator Dudley is charged with overseeing and enforcing this important law. It is my hope that she can talk frankly about the underlying weaknesses of the law and whether she has adequate resources to enforce it. While OIRA has a difficult task, Small businesses deserve to know exactly why the paperwork burden continues to grow. In today's testimony, we will surely hear about some of the successes of WIRA, but we also wish to understand the obstacles that are preventing the office from reducing paperwork requirements for small businesses. Additionally, it is critical to get answers why some agencies continue to violate the law. It is our hope to identify what steps are needed to reverse the growth in paperwork. Some critics have pointed out the reason there is poor compliance with PRA may be due to the fact that OMB guidance is inconsistent with the intent of the Act. While the statute says that agencies should work to reduce paperwork burdens on small businesses, OMB guidance seems to incorrectly limit the scope of the law. I am interested in hearing the reasons for this inconsistency and whether the small business sections of the law are being misinterpreted by OIRA. Ensuring that agencies are considering the economic impact of their regulations and paperwork requirements on small firms is critical. It is a primary reason the committee established the Regulatory Flexibility Act to focus on reducing unnecessary paperwork re burden created due to federal regulations. We have already has passed legislation to strengthen RecFlex this Congress, but it is important to examine whether the law, that law and the PRA are working in a cohesive manner. The PRA should not serve to discourage agencies from conducting proper regulatory flexibility analysis all too often we see agencies implementing regulations that ignore or understate economic impacts on small businesses. In many instances, this is because of a lack of communication between the agencies and the small business community. Under, the, under PRA, an agency that wishes to survey more than 10 small businesses to determine the economic impact of a rule is required to receive OMB approval. Since approval may take months, agencies that are eager to move forward with regulations may not be properly assessing potential impacts on small businesses. Enforcement and oversight of PR8 is important, but we have to open the prospects of strengthening it to achieve real change. Today's panel will offer insight on what type of reforms may be needed and if the need for further accountability is required. The reality is the federal paperwork burden continues to grow at a troubling rate and it is harming our nation's small businesses. And it is clear that the purpose of the pa Paperwork Reduction Act is not being realized. I look forward to working with Ranking Member Shabot to ensure this important law is meeting its full potential for small businesses. 
I want to thank all the witnesses for coming here today, and I yield to the ranking member for his opening statement. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and thank you for holding this hearing on the Paperwork Reduction Act. Um, although this committee has legislative jurisdiction over the act, it has not undertaken a comprehensive review of the act since it was last reauthorized back in 1995. During the 1960s and 1970s, Congress enacted dozens of pieces of legislation that imposed record keeping and reporting requirements on the American citizenry, including millions of small businesses. In response to this mushrooming growth in paperwork, small businesses cried out at a White House conference and Congress responded with the passage of the Paperwork Reduction Act back in 1980. The act has three primary objectives. One, minimization of federal reporting and record keeping requirements on individuals and business, especially small businesses. Two, reduction in the government's cost of collecting and utilizing the information obtained from the public. And three, maximization of the value of the information obtained. To meet these objectives, the Paperwork Reduction Act prohibits the establishment of a record keeping or reporting requirement unless it is approved by the Office of Management and Budget's Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs, or ORA. Prior to such approval, the agency requesting information from the public must per perform an extensive assessment of the costs and benefits of the collection of the information. After completing that task, the agency then sends a formal request to ORA for approval of the collection of information. Prior to ORA approval, that office must satisfy itself after providing the public with an opportunity to comment that the collection of information satisfies 10 specific statutory standards which are designed to ensure that paperwork burdens on the public are minimized while still providing the federal government with the necessary information. Despite the act and extensive review by the agency and ORA, the number of hours spent by the public in reporting to the federal government increased from 7.4 billion hours in fiscal year 2000 to 9.2 billion hours in fiscal year 2007. Given this, it remains an open question whether the Paperwork Reduction Act is meeting the laudable goals of minimizing paperwork burdens on the public. I'm particularly interested in hearing what recommendations the witnesses have to modify the act to achieve its goal of burden reduction without sacrificing the government need to obtain critical information. 